ETH is pumping and a lot of you are wanting to know whether this can last or is this just a short run that may be going into oblivion. We're going to find out today. My name is Paul Barron and welcome back to Tech Path. With me today here on the anchor desk is Lisa Francoeur. Here I am, back again. Back again. <laughs> Ta-da! I like it. It's a fun. It's a fun to have we you on the set. We always have fun. Yeah, it's fun we to have you on the set. We always have fun. We want to hear from the, in the We're comments. We're kind of bored in the studio sometimes <laughs> without Lisa. So. The energy, it's infectious. All right, so Lisa, let's talk about the first thing here, which is this ETH London hard fork. It happens very soon. Tomorrow, to <laughs> yeah. be exact. Yeah, August 4th. Here we yep. go. The Ethereum London hard fork will go live, as we said, on August 4th. Uh, you know, the thing about EIP 1559, Paul, is that it's all about reducing gas fees. Yep. I think that that's been one of the biggest gripes um, that we've heard. And finally, you know, the developing the ETH developers community heard us loud and clear, and they're looking to address that with this hard fork. Yeah, I think the, the challenge is that what they're faced with is going to be one, because it's been a while coming, and yeah. and the protocol itself, we've got some people and some uh, big friends of the channel that talk about EIP uh, 1559 and, and why they're not big fans of it. So. It'll be interesting to kind of see how this plays out and whether or not there are any, you know, hurdles that have to be overcome within the hard fork once it happens. They did have one thing on here. The once controversial upgrade contains five Ethereum improvements. Yes, yeah. indeed. And one thing that I'll also say is that, you know, one of those improvements are designed to um, remove coins from circulation, yep. which is where I think a Burn lot em. of the folks who are bullish on Ethereum, um, what's kind of, you know, Fueling, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> Fueling that sentiment that the less coins there are in circulation, uh, the more valuable each coin will be. Yeah, it's going to work like uh, this was a piece, although it sounds rigid, it's going to help approximate the fee. Current fee system operates in somewhere like an auction house, which is, yeah, you know, it is. Meaning people tend to overpay for their transactions. So that's going to be the thing. But here was a statement that I thought was interesting. Think like a 20% reduction, not like a 20x. Right. So that to me is not game changing sure. too much. So I'm a little concerned with whether or not, meaning not that I'm bearish on ETH at all, I'm very bullish on ETH, but I am a little concerned with a technology. And this is, listen, I was in the technology um, software development field for a long time. I know when engineers have to go fix, oh, excuse me, <laughs> when they have to go fix stuff, and um, and then you're fixing the stuff you had to fix, right? You know, and it starts to really kind of create that band-aid system in your in your package that the software package that it really becomes a little bit of a problem. And that's why and when they do this thing called a rewrite. Right. Okay. Tesla's doing that right now with all, you know with all, with the autopilot. It happens. You know, so. I mean, you you have to be extremely um, yeah. mindful of the fact that this is technology and it is extremely iterative. So, so one thing that I want to call out is that the second component of EIP 1559 is that the fee is not channeled to miners, right? The people currently operating hardware, wherever they are in yep. the world, um, are not going to nest, are not going to be impacted per se. This fee is burned and sent to inaccessible wallets, right? So basically what we're saying here, Paul, is that the coins that are being removed from circulation are going to help drive down transaction fees, yeah. which in turn I think will increase the value. All right, so let's jump to the second story. ETH 2.0 sees rays of hope after, back to my point, multiple delays and internal conflicts. Because this is one thing that Vitalik has talked about, that it's not the tech, it's the people. Yep. That, that their, their limitation in growth right now has been really based on their team. You know, either acquisition of great developers or within the team itself, kind of building into that next layer. There Welcome are, a few, yeah, <laughs> but there are a few points. Price flash, sell signal. This was one that I thought was interesting. Ethereum price flashed a sell signal, hinting a correction. Now, hinting a correction after 58% upswing. Yep, that's where we right? are now. So you know, it's going to be interesting to see how when we start to transition. You know, we talked about the hard fork, but transitioning to um, the ETH 2.0, yep. which is the proof of stake. Yep. Um, what are the implications going to be? How is that going to impact even the, um, the the operations of the network? Right, right. Well, I think one of the things when you look at the, because the question you guys are probably asking is, hey, is this, a, is this the time to buy into ETH? Where's my entry point? And often, and I'm, a, I'm kind of an ETH connoisseur in the sense I do a lot of swing trading. 
I'll buy yeah. in and then jump out real quick, usually within a 24 hour period. And ETH has been really good to me over the past 10 days where I've been able to do that all the way back down to when ETH was trading at 1800 bucks. But one thing that is kind of interesting, and I always look at this, and this is this uh, component right here, which says, while this upswing was stellar, it might be coming to end. This was the momentum reversal indicator flash the sell signal based on the scenario. This goes back to my whole theory of you buy the rumor, sell the news. Mm. Meaning you're, it's, it's kind of like if you follow Tesla and on our channel, I know a lot of you guys do, you followed Tesla after those stellar earnings and the price just went to the floor, dropped. But leading up to that, the price action was hot and, right. and the, the stock was climbing. And I think that's what is gonna happen with ETH. We'll probably see a little bit of a soft period and most likely another buying opportunity mm -hmm. for you ETH connoisseurs out there. So that's gonna be an interesting aspect to kind of flow into. But according to this, core developer Tim Bako, the hard fork will go live on fourth. Uh, in other words, it's gonna arrive at the block height of 12,965,000. So that's gonna be interesting in the sense that they're gonna roll this thing out. I do wanna jump to mm -hmm. the price prediction here though. Here we and this go. Here this we go. was one that of course everybody knows and loves. I mean, Raul Paul is, you know, from a macroeconomic standpoint, one of the loudest and quite honestly, most respected voices in the industry. The fact that he's predicting $20,000, yeah. ETH trading at $20,000 per. He's been holding point, on that too. Super bullish yeah. on ETH. But let's talk about why, right? And, and whenever we get to the technical analysis, I always defer to Paul, because that's like within his wheelhouse. I'm getting better though. Uh, but I'll say from a fundamental standpoint, when you think about the utility associated with ETH, you've got NFTs, you've got smart contracts that supersede just, you know, art and yep. what, whatnot. Um, you're starting to see, um, and just DeFi, right? Like there's so many, um, there's so many um, indicators to me that we are just scratching the surface in terms of sure. where it could go. But again, I think there's, a distinction between being a trader and an investor. I'm an investor, so I'm ETH long. Yeah. All right, so the one thing that Raul does is he really layers in on this thing called Metcalf's Law. He's right. talked about this for, the you know, effect. over the year. And I think with ETH and the potential of what that could be, one, it's a fairly uh, dense population in terms, of one, obviously it's number two on the chart in terms of coin, yep, uh, the market cap. Right. Will it have that much more impact with mm. with hard fork to really kind of move it? Now, there's a lot. Listen, I get we have our big investor circle, and I've got people in high places who have people in high places yep. that talk about you know the bulls are coming for ETH and let's not the forget decoupling. about the institutional money that's coming yeah. into ETH, including Goldman. Yeah. So, like, there's something to be said about the fact that again, there's this mobilization in the marketplace and recognizing that ETH could have the potential, and, and I know this is gonna be super controversial, I'm sure I'll hear it from you all in the comments, but eclipsing Bitcoin yeah. as store of value. Well, that's the flippening. You know, there's a few pe people that talk about that too, you know, the flippening. Could it happen? Last point was crypto.com, they've partnered up here and believe that essentially, kind of they did this thing with the UFC, but they've also said, hey, we're gonna go in and actually prep for the hard fork. So we're gonna start with the process of the transaction requirements. So that's a good thing. They are saying that once the platform goes live, they're gonna suspend ERC-20 tokens. Mm. Uh, so that's interesting. USDC, NT, and then ETH deposits and withdrawals. So the transaction will say shut for both crypto.com's app and online exchange. The platform will restrict the operations around two hours before the network reaches its target block height. And so, Paul, with that in mind, I think it's a testament to how the community is rising to the occasion in a very collaborative right. way, which is indicative of, of the world of crypto. You know, we believe in projects, we support the projects, and we want to ensure that um, we help projects run more efficiently and effectively. So, yeah. again, to me, a bullish indicator. Yeah. So, okay, so we've looked at the news, uh, the debate on the London Hard Fork. You know what's next. ERC, so we're gonna go into TA. Technical and analysis. So we wanna take a look at uh, where, where retail investor sentiment might be rolling from. So what I did was we pulled data back to March on where ETH was. This was, again, pre the dip in May. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can kind of see the flow, sentiment holding fairly high, 53. Remember, 50 and up, is a very positive, so ETH obviously being a major project is always got a really good sentiment. Uh, amplification was a little low in March, it moved up a little bit in April, uh, continued to rise in May, 
And even after the drop, I think this was because ETH became such a good buy yep. at that point. But sentiment was dropping. Right. So that was because the price was dropping. So you see that occur. And there and was then, a retracement in the market at large. Exactly. So, so, and then, of course, in June, we hit the 51.23. What was interesting was July. This is where the scores started to really get uh, very interesting, and that was almost a 60 uh, score on sentiment and over a 60, 60 score on amplification, which indicated the market tracement we saw from 1,800 to almost 2,400 on, right. on ETH. So that was a big deal. I want to jump over to trading view. And let's go to Trading View real quick. All right, so with Trading View, the focus we looked at here was this period of time right here, which is uh, June 15th. Let me get my marker so you guys can know where I'm pointing. That period right there, we scored the sentiment in this downturn, which was right here on June 22nd. Sentiment held on pretty tightly at 48.16 in the 51.23 that you guys just saw. Uh, and then this tracement right here was the next time we were able to pull the sentiment. This is the one that was most recent. And this was putting the price in right at around 24. It had dropped down to that almost $1,700, $1,800 mark. This is where most people started really playing uh, heavily in ETH. And then uh, the, this is where the amplification score really started to charge, and that's what we saw right here in terms of our amplification zone, which held pretty well intact with exception of this little bubble right here. That was the only thing we didn't predict, um, which was on July 26th, where it went up to almost uh, 2,400, a little over, right at 2,400. And then where we are right now, where it hit 26 over the weekend, almost 27. And then now a little bit of retracement now down to 25. Uh, and, and the question I think a lot of people are asking is could we hit this zone right here, which would be getting down toward the $2,000 mark? I don't know that we will. The, there's a couple of things. One, the hard fork. Just the news is going to help sustain this unless we see something negative come out of this. If something negative flies off, uh, kind of flies off in the new cycle, yep. that could take us back down to another buying position, which I feel like is right now around 2200. If you're able to get ETH at around the 2200 and watch it, because the question still remains, is this the beginning of that remainder of the bull run that we've been looking forward to? That's kind of where we are. I mean, my thing is that um, if Ethereum price manages to stay above the 100-day sm uh, smooth moving average yep. um, and the 78.2% Fibonacci extension level, these are bullish indicators. Yep. I'd say that we could aim for a 28.47 price, um, and that could, if it continues to run up, 29.55. So oh, nice. it looks pretty inexpensive Good. given what the... Um, what the charts are showing. Yeah. We'll see. So, so as you guys see, our price prediction right now on the low end, still holding around 27, on the high end, right around 33. So this is kind of where I see it going. Uh, the question is, how long will it take to hit these zones, whether it's the next four, five, or next 10 days? August 4th is a big day for ETH and all of the ETH community, so we're going to keep a very close eye on it here. If you're listening to us over on the podcast, Make sure and give a star and a like over there. And of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you're subscribing. And of course, we want to hear from you. Comment below. Tell us what you think. Is ETH running up to 3,000 plus or is it going to retrace back to 2,000 and below? I like it. We By end see. of year, we'll see if Raul Paul is right at 20K. 20K. Yeah, that'll be the, That's the one to watch. All right, so if you guys have an idea for a show, you shoot it to us, uh, which is just producer at rubbernetworks.com. You can also hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.